On today's IK of Answers, could M2 jump to the A16 architecture, an iPhone 5C design revival? Satellite communications in the iPhone 14, IK of TikTok, Scott Forstall's exit, Johnny Ive's Dell influence, Pro Mac keyboards and mice, macOS 13 compatibility, all-in-one streaming platforms, and should we take a break from IK of Dave? I'm Mike Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 1300 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. And we're going to get straight into your questions. Armin Dressler asks, IK of Answers, we expect the M2 products to be around spring and summer of 2022. All sources say the M2 is based on A15, which is six to nine months old by then. I can't imagine Apple dropping the M processors that far behind the A series lineup. What is the chance that Apple will skip one generation and instead base M2 on A16, making it the leading technology processor in the lineup? Okay, interesting concept. The thing is, the uh, the Apple A series chips are always pretty much going to lead the M series chips, as far as I can tell. Um, I don't think it's going to be like quite six months old by that point, but remember that even though it's six months old, it is going to have a lot more of those performance cores inside. Therefore, you still get loads more performance out of it. It'll still be the fastest processors. It just means that it won't have the fastest single cores once the next iPhones roll around. And that's a lot more important for an iPhone or an iPad than it is for a Mac. Um, so I don't think there's any, uh, any issues there. It also would get very confusing if we went A14 M1. A16 M2, then A17 M3, A18, no, A19 M4, just it making it an 18 month turnaround doesn't make any sense because Intel used to do pretty much annual updates to their chips and the Macs tended to get those as well. There were certainly some exceptions, so we'd never got Mac Pros as quickly as that, but they were with the Xeon chips and things like that, so there was no uh, no push as much with those as with the i-series chips, with the core chips. I can't see Apple moving over to their own silicon inside their stuff and then slowing down the refresh rate. That just doesn't make any sense. Next up, Team Kinetics asks, I gave answers. Do you think that Apple could ever use the iPhone 5C design language again? I don't think it was a terrible device, more that Apple got the pricing wrong that year. A super cheap plastic iPhone SE might encourage more people into the ecosystem. Now, I've got to say, I was a massive fan of the design language. Never had a 5C, never had one of the, the C series phones. I think my dad might have a blue one. I might have to hit him up and see if I can steal it. But that being said, I do think they were really cool looking phones. Um, I do think that Apple could maybe do a MacBook that has a plastic chassis as well, um, just as we had with the black books and the polycarbonate white MacBooks back in the day. Whether they'll go to it for the iPhones, maybe. Maybe this $269 that we've heard, maybe that's the iPhone SE that we've got right now going into a plastic chassis and they have a $399 new SE. I don't know, but that would be kind of cool. Little Mountain Life asks, IK Vances, maybe I've missed the updates, but what's the word on satellite calling slash messaging for the rumoured iPhone 13 Pro? Looking possible for the iPhone 14 Pro? Everything went really quiet, didn't it, after the, uh, after the iPhone 13s were announced and there was no mention of it at all. It was kind of Ming-Chi Kuo was the first person that mentioned it. Then Mark Gurman said it might be inside, but they don't activate it for a year. All very strange, and I guess that's still a possibility. But I think with the teardowns, people would have found it if there were these satellite communications chips in there. Don't think it's happened. It definitely is something that Apple could look at. Uh, but I think more likely would actually be to move towards satellite communication as a whole if Apple was to do its own version of Starlink or something like that or partner with someone that already has that would be my guess uh, so they could kind of bypass the uh, phone networks entirely Evan Rogers asks, I gave answers any plans to start a TikTok account to post short videos. YouTube Shorts seems like a flop for almost all creators. I've done a couple of YouTube Shorts. I do already have a TikTok, which is uh, just I gave Dave. You can find it on there. Most of the stuff on there is me uh, throwing bottles around from my bartending days. So if that floats your boat, go for it. We've done a couple of tech videos on there. Didn't do particularly well, but then if you only do a couple, it never will. Um, maybe is the answer. Maybe. James Apple, why did Scott Forstall leave Apple? Because I think it's more than the fiasco with Apple Maps launch. Yeah, Scott Forstall definitely took a lot of the fall and a lot of the heat for Apple Maps, uh, but he was also the big proponent of skeuomorphism, didn't get on with other people at the company, and um, although during the Steve Jobs era, like, it didn't seem to be that much of a 
you have to be nice to each other to work here. I, I think that makes a big difference. And I think there's quite a, a possibility that he just didn't get on with certain people. Uh, basically, Apple dumped the skeuomorphism and went over to Johnny Ives' uh, iOS 7, I think it was, where they completely flattened out everything and made it actually quite sterile. Um, I think we've got a little bit of depth back to it now, but it was all on that uh, perspective movement, wasn't it? The parallax. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that was more likely the issue. Team Kinetics asks, I have answers. Do you think Johnny Ive is consulting for Dell? The new XPS 13 laptop introduces a touch bar and a solid state trackpad on a Windows machine. What other Apple features do you think we'll see go mainstream in the next few years? Yeah, I don't think Johnny's doing it. I think it's a, a, a hilarious idea that he might have gone to Dell just to keep those features that he liked so much. Um, Johnny basically liked the minimalism thing. I think solid state uh, and the idea of having buttons that can change to whatever you need um, are a great idea. I don't think we were ready for it. And I think having something that has tactile feedback would have been good as well. If they put a haptic engine under that um, touch bar, maybe it would have had more success. But also the fact that it kind of swallowed up the escape key that a lot of people needed and then crashed sometimes so that you couldn't actually hit escape, not great. In terms of what I think will come uh, to the mainstream kind of PC market from MacBooks and Mac design language, I've got to say, I think it's going to be the notch. I think you're going to see a lot of white bezels and I think you're going to see some notches as soon as that MacBook Air hits the market. Uh, but notches for cameras, I think, is definitely going to happen. Uh, even after everyone ridiculed it, because that's what always happens. Marcin Kvalcek asks, IK Vances, do you think that the Pro iMac will get Pro branded slash coloured input devices to go with it, or are we stuck with white mice and keyboards? I think there's almost no doubt that we'll be getting uh, matching keyboards and mice for the new iMacs, because all of the current ones get colours that match them as well. I know they've got the, the white glass tops, but then the colours of the aluminiums match, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if we get Pro IMAX in space grey and black and gold that have darker, maybe black glass. I think that would be really cool. Black glass and black keys in the keyboards. Um, and then matching coloured aluminium underneath. Aluminium. Why did I say aluminium? Alan B unboxings and news. IK answers. Will my late 2017 MacBook Air be compatible with macOS 13 beta or macOS final version, or be discontinued? Well, first of all, if it's going to be uh, compatible with the beta, it will be co compatible with the final version. They don't kind of allow it for some and then pull it away again. Apart from with like developer transition kits and things like that. I would say uh, my best guess is this will be its last year of compatibility. Um, this is not. I hate on Intel thing. Uh, I think there will be Intel uh, devices that carry on for a couple of years after that. But I think this is going to be the last year for the 2017 MacBook Airs. They're a little bit underpowered as it is. And uh, I think you're going to struggle to get much past here. Um, the other thing with uh, macOS is obviously as the years are going on, less and less of the new features are coming to any Intel models. So you are going to start losing some of those cooler new things that Apple Silicon does. But to be honest... When you look back, this is also something that happened during the Intel days. It's not special that it's Apple Silicon that runs these, uh, but things like AirDrop didn't work on some of the earlier Macs and MacBooks. Uh, I think my 2011 MacBook Air did it a bit, but it wasn't particularly reliable. Then my 2013 iMac worked great with AirDrop, and that's what I used all the time. Uh, but kind of if you had a Mac from a couple of years before AirDrop was introduced as a software feature, your hardware might not have been compatible with it because of the Bluetooth uh, and things like that. Tim Kinetics, I gave answers, not strictly Apple question, but do you think we will ever see an all-inclusive entertainment streaming package for TV, music, films, books, etc.? Do you think we'll ever see Apple expand a service like Apple One to include non-Apple services? If not, what kind of company, if any, could provide this service? It's not especially user-friendly to keep switching between Apple TV, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Prime, Spotify, Apple Music, etc. to find the content you want. A one-stop shop for all of your content streaming needs doesn't seem likely in the near future, but could it ever happen? It's a very strange one because at the beginning, Netflix was kind of the all-encompassing for streaming, and then as the different content producers pr made their own services up, they kind of pulled their content back. There was Disney content on Netflix, then it was pulled back to go on to Disney+. Plus. There was um, DC content on there, and there still is in the UK, but in the States it went to DC All Access, and Warner Brothers, and HBO Max, and 
so it's actually getting more fragmented rather than the other way around. The one thing that's not is music. So like Apple Music kind of covers all of the music publishers, pretty much. You have one music subscription and that covers basically all music that's kind of professionally published. I mean, obviously you don't get as many indie artists and things like that. But I think the closest you could get is probably someone like Amazon. Uh, so like Amazon Prime has Prime Video, which obviously they don't have everything on it, but they also have Prime Music. They also have um, Kindle and they have the, the book stuff and they have Audible for audiobooks. That's the closest that you're probably going to get. Um, I think the issue is that you could well get Apple bringing in an audiobook system and they've already got Apple Books. Uh, so they could add a subscription tier to that where you get basically like library access to books, um, which I think would be a really good way of doing it. I think books should be on a subscription in the same way that music is. You can't read more than one book at the same time, so why not? But yeah, I don't think you're going to ever see anyone bring together all of the video content in one place, in one subscription. And to be honest, moving between apps is no different from what we used to have, switching between channels. And Brian Data asks, I gave answers during this low news period. Why don't you give yourself a bit of a break and only record episodes every second day or Monday, Wednesday and Friday? And the reaction to this in the comments was boo from Evan Rogers, who's one of our Patreons. And um, yeah, I'm not planning to reduce the amount of content that we're putting out. There are occasional days when I do struggle to because of work and things. Please bear with me on those. But at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of creators that are going to kind of take their foot off the pedal at this point. If I can still put out content for you guys that you find useful, whether that's IK answers or looking back at some stuff or kind of analysing, maybe we could do more of those um, reactions to old uh, events, older Apple events. Maybe that would be interesting. If it is, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe we should do a reaction to each of the first so when we got the intel transition when we got the first apple watch when we got the first ipad when we got the first um i don't know anything along those lines kind of product category launches uh and seeing where they've come from there that might be an interesting way of doing it let me know down in the comments thank you to all the patreons over here these guys rock my world no sponsors today so uh have a great tuesday and i'll see you later